This is Dr. Mobin Sayed with one more episode of Long Story Short with Dr. Bean from the FLCCC platform. The discussion today is about the oral dose for methylene blue solution. So let's look at that. So we will also discuss the update in terms of the methylene blue and the dosage recommendation at the FLCCC platform. So here, this is the flccc.net or covid19criticalcare.com. Here, if you go to the treatment protocols and then go to this I Recover document on this page, this is the I Recover. Let me make it a little bigger. And as you scroll down and look at these therapies, here you will see the adjunctive second line therapies and in that methylene blue. So this is now we're talking about the methylene blue oral dose. I would present some cautions and cares after going over the dosage here. So methylene blue has a number of biological properties that may be potentially beneficial in vaccine injured patients and long COVID as well, especially the neurological symptoms, patients who have those symptoms. Methylene blue induces mitophagy and has anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, neuroprotective and antiviral properties. It actually is also ATP enhancing and because it is an electron cycler, it can kickstart the electron transport chain in a mitochondria that is struggling because of the lack of nutrients, lack of NADH or lack of FADH2 or lack of oxygen. So very powerful molecule. Low dose methylene blue is a therapeutic option in patients with brain fog and other neurological symptoms. Patients or their healthcare providers need to purchase high quality methylene blue powder and formulate an orally administered 1% solution, which is 10 milligram in one milliliter solution or 0.5 milligram per drop as follows. Mix one gram of methylene blue with 100 milliliter of water. So I was discussing the dosage with Dr. Paul Merrick and he mentioned that it is actually preferable if you can buy 1% solution and Amazon has many, many brands that offer that instead of making it at home because that would make sure that the dosage is correct and dosage is important. So I think to care for yourself and to care for the correct dosage, it is actually, as Dr. Paul Merrick said, it is better to buy a solution instead of preparing one. Now the dosage itself, start with one or two drops in the morning for the first two days. So look at this, one or two drop, that is 0.5 milligram per day or one milligram per day. There are actually, uh, I have some patients who tweeted to me that just one drop has been sufficient for them. One drop being 0.5 milligram per day has been sufficient for them for many of their neurological symptoms. And here I want to read one more person's note without telling their name. So this person, this patient has neurological symptoms after a vaccine. And this could be after long COVID as well. And they tried various protocols and did not get a lot of help. And according to them, he used the word nerve pain. So he said the nerve pain on a scale of 10 is 8, 9. And he's been suffering like this for many, many months. And finally, he said he started looking into FLCCC protocols. And then look at this. When FLCCC started discussing methylene blues and LDN is already there too. He said using LDN 4.5 milligram and day four of methylene blue, 1200 microgram, the nerve pain has gone from 8, 9 on a scale of 10 to 2, 3. That is how much. Uh, and so they sent me a thank you note for discussing these. And of course, a thank you goes to FLCCC to put those things together, these protocols and put them out here. So back to the dosing. Start with one or two drops in the morning for the first two days. On the third day, increase the dosage to three drops daily for the next two days. Then continue increasing the dosage by one drop every two days, guided by symptoms that is improvement in fatigue and or cognitive improvement until you reach a maximum of 22 drops. The optimal dose is highly individualized. So this is very important. Everyone is going to metabolize it differently everyone is going to respond to it differently. So you have to start very small 
and slowly increase this to a level where this helps. Take for six days, low dose methylene blue, seventh day off to give your body a rest and keep in mind that it can cause your urine to be blue or blue green. Some patients may experience a Hirsch reaction. Hirsch reaction may cause fatigue, nausea, headache, or muscle pain due to accumulated toxins leaving the body. If you experience a Hirsch reaction, stop the protocol for 48 hours and then resume again slowly. Do not take methylene blue if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. So with this, I also want to add some cautions which are here as well but are important. So with that dosage, as I said before, make sure that if you can buy it, that is preferable. Then protect your teeth. So methylene blue can color the teeth bluish. So there are a few techniques to help with that. And before that, there are companies that are now making methylene blue in capsule so that the teeth are not colored. So once you've taken the methylene blue drops, rinse and brush after taking the oral drops. That is one way to prevent coloring. Or you can buy your own empty capsules and add the drops in those capsules and use them. And then of course, hopefully in near future, we'll have companies that will offer methylene blue inside the capsules. Now, as you read before as well, methylene blue can change the color of your urine and it can go from blue to greenish. The reason for that is, remember, our urine can change color, right? Sometimes it becomes more transparent and less yellow and sometimes it becomes more yellow depending upon the concentration and the fluid intake, type of food. Sometimes it, even it can take other colors based on what we have eaten or medicines or supplements or even genetic factors. So a person whose urine is more transparent towards less yellow color will show more methylene blues blue color. On the other hand, if somebody's urine is more yellowish because of the components of it, then when you add blue color to it, the color would look greenish. So that is normal. And similarly, if there are other urine colors because of the supplements or drugs, then the mixture of blue can occur. Now, some contraindications and cautions. I always put them in the methylene blue talk so that you are aware of it. Number one, 40% of the methylene blue is excreted through kidney. And we received a note as well from someone who uses it. If the kidney function is impaired, then make sure that you are monitoring your kidney functions and also talk with your doctor to see what should be the right dose because dose may have to be changed. Similarly, methylene blue is extensively metabolized in the liver. So patients with the liver disease may have to change their dose as well. So talk with your doctor and figure out what is the right dose because they would know the intensity or the extent of the liver disease and then decide what is the right dose. Don't take methylene blue during pregnancy. It is a teratogenic drug. It can cause, it will cause damage to the baby, developing baby. Don't use it during breastfeeding. Don't take it with the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs. It can cause serotonin syndrome. Don't take it if you have G6PD deficiency because methylene blues addition can cause severe hemolysis. And you can read more side effects and contraindications on these pages. So let me just very quickly go to these pages as well to show you. So here, this is drugs.com and methylene blue and various uses, doses, and then renal dose adjustment, liver dose adjustment, precautions and other. That is here. Similarly, side effects are here. And if you wanted to see the drugs reactions, you can actually do this drug reactions or interactions, actually drug interactions. So if you go to drugs.com here, you can put drug here, for example, let's say methylene blue. And then you can add another drug. For example, this morning, someone was looking for Lyrica and that reaction with methylene blue. And so if you say check for interaction, it says interaction between your drugs, no interactions were found. And then there is a moderate interaction of Lyrica with food, and that is what they've discussed. The point is that if you're taking medicines, there are contraindications, side effects, medicines nominated in these pages, but you can go to this drugs.com as well to make sure that the drugs are okay. And of course, talk with your doctor as well. So that is the discussion. Thank you very much for your time. And please look up the protocol and the methylene blue over there. If there are any further changes, we'll keep updating the protocols as well. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time.